Today is not decision day, guys. It is not. But I'm going to give you my decision shortly. My decision is to spend the entire show reacting to Aaron Rodgers' appearance today. With Pat and all the things he said, didn't say. It looks like he's going to become a Jet. Let's just get into it. This is going to be a one-topic show until maybe I throw a dart and maybe the dart will be about Josh Allen. Thanks for coming to the basement. Right into it. What I love, what I hate, and what's hilarious. Come on now. Decision day. Uh, let me say right off the bat, great job and congratulations to Pat McAfee and his boys for another great show, great experience, great media experience. Love Pat, respect Pat. I've been on Pat's show, he's been on my show, and uh, I think uh, not enough people say that. I know they say his name all the time, but it's a big deal what he just did, and I tip the hat to him big time. Uh, I love that it happened. That's your love right now. I love that Aaron Rodgers has made his decision. What a weird watch, huh? I, I enjoyed it. <laughs> I, I enjoyed it for its wonkiness, for its... Uh, hidden ball trick for its strange feel. It wasn't triumphant, it wasn't sad. It, it, it was kind of all big mixed up jambalaya of weird Aaron Rodgers-ness plus some football news. Starts out after, after days, hours, weeks, months, years, eons of speculation and the storyline. We've talked about it, you've talked about it. And you're like, all right, here he goes. He's gonna say, I am joining the New York Jets. Or maybe I have decided to retire and I've played my last down. Great. Just give us the decision. That's why we're all here. He starts out. Today is not decision day. What? What? What are you talking about? And why are you here? Why would you why would you appear? What are you doing? You know the elephant in the room. It's you. Today is not decision day. Yes, it is. Make it. Announce it. Only then to <laughs> take a few minutes and then uh, give the decision. It actually was decision day. So why did you say it wasn't? Um, there's this whole interim period between today is not decision day to reflecting and thinking and Adam in the cafeteria in Green Bay got a shout out before we actually announced that we want to play for the New York Jets. Man, he's probably had a lot on his mind lately and uh, I, th I think it was a little all over the place. Yes, he got to the point where he says, I want to play for the New York Jets. He is done with the Packers. And um, the quotes are all over the place. I love Green Bay, but the facts are that they want to move on. And now, so do I. What's really interesting about it is that the question has always been motivation. What is the motivation for the Packers to move on from the all-time great? arguably the best Packer ever, which Pack, which Rogers said. What is the Rogers motivation? Why, why do you want to move on? And it turns out he didn't. The, the thing that was so striking, the biggest takeaway from this whole thing, if you didn't see it, if you, ha if you haven't seen it yet, Rogers was going to retire. Rogers says he went into the darkness or came out of the darkness retreat, 90% retired, 90%. But then he found out that the Packers were shopping him, and then he said, I'm back. Now, in so many words, that's what he said. That this move to the Jets is a spite play, a revenge play, a vengeance move to go to the Jets because he didn't like that the Packers were going away from him. He says he's not offended, but he decided to not retire when he realized that the Packers wanted to move on. That's unbelievable. Quote, nobody bled green and gold like me. They want to move on. They don't want me to come back. I love Green Bay, but the facts are they want to move on. And now, so do I. That's a totally different deal. That is not, it's been just a long, great run here. We've done some great things, have some great memories, but it's kind of worn out. And I would really like a change. And preemptively, before darkness retreats and contemplation, and yoga meditation, what have you, I think I would like to go to a new team. There's some things that are really interesting to me about that new team. No, this is, he says 90%. I'm retiring, I'm done. What, 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 you're gonna try, you're moving on from me? You decided to date other people? Well, now I'm not retiring. Now I'll date anybody. Now I just wanna go to any football team in the world just that's not you, and it's gonna happen to be the Jets. That's personal. That's um, sensitive. It, this always com it's always complex with Rodgers. It always has been from the time he was coming out of Cal. It's never simple. It's never one note. It's always many layered. And so is this. 
I love that the decision is out. I am surprised. I, I thought he was going to come out and just throw roses around the Packers. You know, last time he won an MVP, Rodgers was saying how much his relationship with the front office has grown, and I love Lafleur and Goody and all the teammates there, and I love them, and they're the best ever, and what a great set of memories we developed. I just think I need a fresh challenge, a restart, a reset, so I'm going to take my talents to New Jersey. I'm going to play for the New York Jets. I was done. I didn't have any more football to play. Then I found out they didn't want me anymore, and now I'll play until I'm dead, just to spite them. That's the Rodgers we're getting. It's awesome. It's a lot spicier. It's a lot better. It's, <laughs> it's a lot meatier. It's, it's good. I, I was shocked that he went into that. Shouldn't be. But I think maybe more I was entertained than shocked. I still, you know what I'm shocked by? That it hap this happened. Not, not that it had, that's, we've known for a week now, a couple weeks. Go back a couple of months. Even go back a year from now, Rodgers is going to play for the Jets? Let's get into what I hate. That plays right into this. So what I hate was, look, I, I was, it appears that I was very, very wrong about this. You watched The Basement now for months. Since this started... Anytime the word Jets would come up in the same sentence as Rogers, I would sit here and look into that camera and talk into this microphone and say, no, nah, it's not going to happen. Look, Rogers is not playing for the Jets. <laughs> Rogers is not going to come to this part of the country for a bunch of reasons. Some of them were intangible. Some of them were just using my instincts. And so part of them was just human nature of saying, first of all, the Jets are an absolute factory of misery for almost all football but mostly quarterbacks it's a terrible terrible history of guys being built up and beat down and either they don't have it or they can't stand it or the media chews them up I just, why would you want to jump into that why, why would you want to do that that's part of the experience here but i just don't see rogers jumping into it and then just culturally geographically i live in this part of the country same part of the country as a lot of jets fans I lived in California for over a decade. I was born in the Midwest. I spent my summers in Wisconsin. I know all these places that are relevant in Roger's life in one way or another. It was hard for me, it still is, to see this uh, Jedi ninja zen monk hippie from Chico move to North Jersey. Different deal here. Different than Wisconsin, different than California. It's just different. It's a different feel. It's a different climate. It's a different type of people. It's a different rush. It's a different speed. It's a different set of sports and media and everything. It's a different world. It really is. And I just didn't see it fitting in. Seems like a big pain in the ass for him when he could go sit in Malibu or wherever the hell he is, Hawaii, and just retire and knowing that he's going to walk into the Hall of Fame five years after he retires. You want to come to New Jersey? You want to go to MetLife Stadium and share that stadium with another team off the, the turnpike and a coach... Third year coach in Salah who's excited but needs to win. It's, it's just like a big pain for someone who's pushing 40 and has got nothing to prove really. Why would you want to do that? You want to jump on some sort of gravy train that's got this amazing deal and sounds in the south and it's, it's in the NFC where it's going to be easier. I could see you crushing on that. I just never saw the Jets thing. I st I'm still shocked by it. And we'll see. Be careful what you wish for. I was wrong and I didn't think it was going to happen. It looks like it's going to happen. The media stuff has been built up so much by me, by others, that the idea that this is not Appleton, Wisconsin. This is the Big Apple. This is not a small handful or a small group of reporters who you've known for years, who have a certainly a reverence for you, maybe some of them even a fear, and they ask tough questions, sort of, and they get their reports, sort of, and I respect the Wisconsin media. It is a pack of wolves slammed into one miserable room in northern New Jersey just trying to just peck at you and peck at you and peck at you and every little thing in your personal life completely in play and all your controversial opinions completely in play. And you want to talk about the two-minute drill that you had against the, the Bills last week? They don't. They want to talk about this relationship you have and this blah, 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 blah. Every single day. And you know what's interesting? Even this the media session with, with Pat today... It, it was another exhibit that Aaron spends a lot of time and sometimes a lot of focus, sometimes a lot of energy trying to correct media reports or refute stories. This is not true. That's ridiculous. And I understand why he does it because it hits close to home and it cuts. 
that is a way of treading water that will make you drown in New York City. You can't spend your focus and your energy on that, on going around the room or having every media session or every podcast saying, no, this was nonsense, this was ridiculous. You just can't. There's too many. It's, it's you know, putting the holes in the dam. You get knocked off the dam and you're very smart and very tactical. And I do not play into this thing about Aaron Rodgers can't field tough questions or that he's going to be some sort of babe in the woods once he gets into the New York media. It's not that. It's all the other stuff. And it's his, his real insistence and his ability to refute things about him in the media. A lot of energy and time spent on that. That, listen, if I was him, that would be one of my, one of my goals, one of my pledges to myself is that I'm just going to play through stuff. Because if there's a report about you in the New York Post and you spend three minutes saying how wrong it is, then there's 12 reports the next day. It's, it's quicksand. And your teammates are asked about it and the fans are asked about it and the coach, it's just, it's just gross. He's been through a lot of stuff in Green Bay. He knows gonna, the volume's gonna be different in New York. I just hope he spends less time trying to turn that volume down. Just play through it, play through it. It's unbelievable. You know the other part of it. <laughs> this, this will come up now. It's a, it's a lock, a lock, an off-the-board lock that the 2023 Aaron Rodgers New York Jets, they're going to be on Hard Knocks on HBO. They're eligible. They haven't picked that team yet. So his introduction, his first training camp, can you even imagine the focus on that and how much Hard Knocks is going to focus on Rodgers and training camp for the Jets? HBO's not stupid. They'll pick the Jets. The NFL's not stupid. They'll pick the Jets. Wait till the schedule comes out. The Jets and fans always gripe and moan about not having primetime games, but they're going to have seven. <laughs> they're, they're all going to be in primetime. It's going to be huge. They're everywhere. Now, that's great for Rodgers. He's an incredible primetime quarterback. But my God, they're going to do every little detail. Liam Schreiber is going to be drinking honey tea, getting ready to record his voiceover about Aaron Rodgers' eccentricities and his interests, and they're going to follow him to where he lives. It's, it's going to be a whole thing. whole thing. Maybe it'll be really fun. I'm into it. I don't say this is a terrible thing. I'm actually really excited for it. I don't know. It's just, it gives a little bit of fuel to guys I'm going to talk about in a second who are, don't think this is the greatest idea ever. I have a problem with them, but I hate out. Listen, hand up. I was wrong. I don't care. I'm not someone in the media who is really worried about being right all the time. I try to be more of a human being like you and me. What person is right all the time? You take shots, you're wrong. I don't care. It's part of being a relatable. I couldn't, I couldn't believe he's going to move to New Jersey. Rodgers might even be one of those unusual ones who like lives in Manhattan and plays for the Jets. I remember Brandon Marshall, either in the Jets or the Giants or both, lived in Manhattan. And he was just like, yeah, it's, I just feel like I live in the city. Just so you know, the players almost never do that. They all live close to the facility in northern New Jersey. Who knows? Rodgers, it's, it's all happening now. He's going to become a Jets. That's his intention for a New York Jet. My intention is to talk about what's hilarious. Let's get to chapter three. I think it's hilarious that there is a there is a very vocal group that thinks that this is bad for the Jets, that this was a bad day, and that him saying that my intention is to play for the New York Jets is nightmare fuel, that they don't want it, that it's a disaster waiting to happen, and this is a bad decision by the New York Jets. And this is not a straw man argument where who the hell's saying that? I sat with one of them today at Good Morning Football. Ryan Leaf is out there now. That Ryan Leaf, number two overall pick behind Peyton, Washington State, you remember him from the Chargers. Um, he's now everywhere in the media. If you don't follow him, you should. He has really strong opinions, like extremely strong, sometimes really against the grain, too. I sat with him this morning. He thinks that the Jets going for Rodgers is a big mistake, that they should not do it. He said it's going to be a mudslide. It's going to be bad. It's going to go terribly. And it's just like, why? What are you talking about? And he's just like, I'm paraphrasing, he said, open your eyes. This guy's sitting here listing the players he wants to be with, and it's so much money, and it's so much this, and so much that. It's just so much. And, and you know, you say to him, well, Matt Stafford joined the Rams. They won the Super Bowl. Tom Brady joined the Buccaneers. They won the Super Bowl. And he's like, that's the NFC. It's a different deal. It's a false equivalency with Brady and Rodgers. It's a different deal that Stafford put through. It's, he's got to go through the AFC. He's also, it's, Leaf was also saying this morning, it's ridiculous that people think he's going to be the best quarterback in the AFC East. He's like, he's not as good as Josh. He's not even close. Like, he was just going. So there's those people. And then there's, a, I think, a contingent of Jets fans or New Yorkers or locals, what have you, who just 
say you're taking this great young core that you have took, taken so much time to build and this great defense and the offensive rookie of the year and the defensive rookie of the year and you're throwing in this sort of rock star televangelist big time celebrity media lightning rod quarterback you're gonna ruin them you're gonna ruin them that's hilarious to me what are you guys talking about shut up here's the deal here's the facts this is not my opinion these are facts in the 21st century, the New York Jets have had one Pro Bowl quarterback. One. Anybody can make the Pro Bowl these days. Snoop Huntley of the Ravens was in the Pro Bowl last year. They've had one. It was Brett Favre from the Packers. They got a guy now who, doesn't, who wouldn't even consider going to the Pro Bowl so far beneath him. It hasn't been for years. That's the quarterback they have in the building, in the facility, wearing green. Understand that. Understand this. The Jets... The New York Jets in their entire history have never had a player win MVP. It's never happened. There are only about six teams in the entire NFL have never had that, and most of them have the excuse of being young. The Texans, the Jags have never won MVP. The Jets have never won it. They got a guy who's won four. You're going to bring him in. And you you want to say no to him? No, because he's going to ruin the young core. What are you talking about? What would you rather have them do? Stick with Zach? <laughs> Leaf said he should make a play for Lamar. That's a whole different deal. It's a whole different pursuit. It's a whole different set of money. No. You, you have Aaron Rodgers wants to come and play for your team. You're going to say, no, stop. Let's not overthink this thing. There's complexities, and there's certainly some kind of baggage they're going to have to deal with, but it's all positive. Can you imagine going up to someone standing around a barrel fire with fingerless gloves and saying, here's the winning Powerball ticket. Do you want to have it? And them saying... No, I don't think it's a good idea. <laughs> no, it's a good idea. You should take the money. You should definitely take it. He, the money is interested in being with you. Take the ticket and go cash it in and buy yourself a coat. That's the Jets fans. I don't know about Rodgers. I've seen people in the media. I've seen fans. I've seen people on Twitter that this is not a good idea. Understand the huddle. First and 10 from the 25. Week one, New York Jets. You go out there. And it's going to be the Offensive Rookie of the Year with Rodgers. It's going to be Brees Hall. It's going to be Michael Carter behind him. It's going to be Lazard. Who the hell knows? Elijah Moore? Don't know. Don't care. Odell Beckham? Don't know. Maybe. Sure. It's, it's, it's set. It's Mercedes Lewis? Maybe. You got Uzama. You got Conklin. You have an actual offense. When's the last time said, oh man, the Jets offense is coming? It's, that's, it's a real thing. I've spent the last half hour talking about the Rodgers is, is unusual and outside the box and the appearance today was a little bit weird. There's nothing weird about the football. Don't tell me he's fallen off. I don't buy it for a second. Here's what the New York Jets are getting in their huddle next year. A healthy, rested, supported, pissed off Aaron Rodgers with a great defense, really good weapons around him, and an organization that he believes really wants him. And the last part might be the most important. This is a sensitive guy. Doesn't mean he's weak. No, 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 no. He listens, he hears, he feels, he hurts, he gets mad. And the Aaron Rodgers that showed up today was angry and felt chided and felt abandoned. He felt the Packers should have never gone on from him. I'm Aaron Rodgers. They did. He's mad. That's the guy you want going to MetLife. That's the guy you're getting going to MetLife. I don't know how it's going to go with the media. I don't. I don't know how it's going to go against the Buffalo Bills. I know how it's gone for about the last 50 years for the Jets. Terribly. Terribly. You got Aaron Rodgers coming. Healthy. Motivated. Zenned in. Darkness retreated out. yoga Meditated. All that stuff. And most importantly, spiteful, heady, vengeful, and wanted. Everybody wants to be wanted. I don't care what you do for a living. You want your employer to value you and want to have you with the company, want to pay you, want to have you come back. I don't care if you've won custodian of the year 50 times. The second you feel like your employer is like, eh, it's not that great. You feel terrible. Terrible. That's a lot of what's going on here. It's ridiculous. I'm going to say, this is so stupid. He thinks the Packers wanted to move on from him. Of course they want to move on from him. He jerks them around every single year. He's threatening retirement, all that. He can. Why does anybody do anything? Because they can. And Aaron Rodgers can do whatever he wants with the Packers. And they said, not anymore. And he said, bye. That's what happened. But don't tell me that the Jets fans saying, I don't know about this. You want to go back to the way it was? Don't you want to roll the dice with the four-time MVP, the best quarterback I've ever seen in my life? I don't have a chance.
He's coming. It's hilarious to me that you would say, maybe this isn't the best idea. Come on, take this. You want, you want to go back and roll the dice next year with the quarterback and maybe get to the wild card? Maybe not. Maybe take a step back. Or do you want a super talented all-timer and say, maybe we win the whole damn thing? That's what you want. It's hilarious to want anything else. What a show. What a day. What a time right now. Yesterday, I was saying how much I love that it hasn't been announced yet. Now that it's been announced, I'm pretty fired up too. Um, I think that's all we have to get to, guys. We'll be back on tomorrow. We've been efforting a friend of ours who plays football pretty soon in the same division as Aaron Rodgers. He's actually one of his division rivals who plays the same position as Aaron Rodgers too. Maybe he'll be back. We don't know. He's in parts unknown, but we're trying. We hear you and we're looking for him. Tweet the show in the meantime at KB Basements. I think we should throw a dart. Let's do it. Let's send the show on a dart. Maybe all 20 topics in the dartboard are going to be Aaron Rodgers related. And maybe they're not. Maybe we'll have a nice little dessert at the end of the show. Whatever number it hits, there's a topic that corresponds to it. And I will ad lib a little ditty about it. That is, is that 9 or 14? That would be number 14. Number 14 on the menu. Bring up the screen. Place you've never been to but want to visit. Hmm. 13 is favorite household chore. Oh man, I hope I never hit 13. I'm gonna try not to. Uh, for a long time, for my entire life up until recently, it was Australia. Like a lot of guys and girls, it's just Australia always seems like this cool place. If you had an Australian accent, you're cool. And you grew up watching Crocodile Dundee and then you had Hugh Jackman. And it was just always like, it's just so damn far and it's so expensive. I can't go, I think I'll just go to Mexico. This is so close. I got to go to Australia a couple years ago for work, so I didn't have to pay, and the travel arrangements were taken care of and all that. Oh my God, I have to tell you. Sydney is stunning. It is a beautiful, immaculately clean, modern, glistening city. I was so impressed with Sydney, and then the rest of Australia, the little bit I got to see it was spectacular too, and it's kangaroos running across the road, and just all the stuff you want. It's awesome, just absolutely awesome. Place I haven't been yet, um, I think the most underrated continent, that's my take, underrated continent on the planet Earth is South America. I just don't think for a lot of Americans it's on our radar for travel. We're always obsessed with Europe um, and then, you know, Australia, Africa, whatnot. But I, I just don't hear a ton of people who are like, yeah, uh, I'm going to Chile. <laughs> oh, really? That's fascinating. Uh, you're not just another person who's going to Rome. Uh, South America in general. I once read that Chile in addition to the strangest geography of any country in the world um, on the map, has the world's largest swimming pool. And it's like a mile long or something. I'm like, I gotta go there someday. So Chile, I love it. Uh, I don't know, uh, I know they have sea bass there and I know not much else about it, I should learn. Chile, that's it. Maybe someday Aaron Rodgers will go there in retirement. In the meantime, he's moving to New Jersey, the Garden State. We'll talk about that a lot more tomorrow. In the meantime, thank you guys. Weird day, but a fun day. Tweet me. Follow, share, like, all that stuff. In the meantime, exit through the garage, close the door on your way out. That's it from the basement. Thank you, love you, see you tomorrow. Thanks, bud.